Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar. I'm Charlene O'Hanlon, moderator for today's event, and I welcome you. As always, we have a great webinar on tap today, but before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items we need to go over. First of all, today's event is being recorded, so if you miss any or all of the webinar, you will be able to watch it on demand. Following today's webinar, we'll be sending out an email that contains a link to access the webinar on demand. And we are taking questions from the audience. So if at any time during today's presentation, you have a question for our speaker, please don't wait, don't hesitate, just use your GoToWebinar control panel and submit your question. And we'll get to as many questions as we can before the end of today's webinar. All right, with that, we will go ahead and kick it off, which is AdLink and InfluxDB deliver operational efficiency for the defense industry with Edge IoT. Our speaker today is an expert in the field, Chris Montague, who is Senior Solutions Architect, IoT Solutions and Technology at AdLink. Hi, Chris, how are you? Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good, good, good. Well, I know you've got a huge presentation to go through, so I'm I'm going to put myself on mute and let you get right to it. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, um, afternoon or morning or evening, uh, wherever you are, uh, everyone. Uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through uh, how we solve uh, technology issues for you know some of our customers or one in particular, one use case in particular. Um, and I'm going to give you also a, a demo as well. Um, and to wrap it up, take some questions at the end. So, who are we? So, AD Link, uh, we are a large global leader, edge computing. Uh, we provide um, robust platforms and user interfaces for real-time data connectivity solutions, right, to enable applications um, for any type of requirement. Uh, there's a little bit of the uh, where we're based and the side of, sort of the company we are. What we like to do, AD Link, is we like to make IoT simple. And in doing so, that means uh, we have the both the hardware and the software capabilities to do that for any of our customers. And our main thing and what we specialize in, it, we specialize in doing is connecting unconnected devices, uh, being able to stream data to any particular point that it needs to be at, and then we can obviously control that at the edge. Just some of the open architectures that we're actually involved with and consortiums we've been involved with, just I'm not going to leave that there for very long. I'm just to give you an idea of the, the sort of things that we do with a number of different partners in open architecture. And we also have a number of different partners from strategic and edge type solutions as well. And uh, one of them you're going to see today. So let's dive straight in. So what's special? What are we doing here? Um, what is a link all about? Well, what we have is a technology called the, the data river. And uh, what that is, is uh, think of it as a concept. And it's a way where we can, uh, over time, we can aggregate multiple things and provide some basic awareness to that particular thing. So we can stream that data anywhere. So we can actually get some valuable input or output for whatever we're dealing with. And what we're talking about doing is bringing some intelligence to the edge. Um, and as you can see on my screen, um, these are the sort of things that typically that most people and customers are sort of looking for when you actually do things at the edge. Now, one thing I like to define uh, right off the back is when I talk uh, IoT at the edge, I'm talking the edge of your device, you know, right next to it in the factory shop floor. So when I'm talking edge, I'm not talking about the cloud, I'm talking about your premise. Um, just wanted to put that there as a definition so everybody's on the same page. So what is a link edge, which you're going to see uh, in uh, when I do my demo? Um, it's our platform 
uh, for that can be used to share and consume data. So there are a number of things that you that anybody wants to do um, to make sure that you're seeing and acting on data. And the first thing is that you actually have to get to it. So we provide the connectivity suites and sensors and um, the right protocol so you can actually connect using our data river to a number of different endpoints. Now, this will allow us to stream that data so we can visualize it, so we can dashboard it in some way. You need to be able to store it somewhere so you can act on historic data. Once you actually store it, you, you might actually want to do something with that data and make sure that uh, um, you can actually affect change when you've done some analytics on the edge, for example. And of course, you want to do that securely um, we can connect to a number of different sensors and machines all at the same time, streaming multiple protocols from anything from an OPC UA to Modbus to MQTT, etc. Okay. So let's show you a demo because you know slides are boring, aren't they? Let's move across. So first up, let me show you what I have on the screen here. Hopefully everybody can see that. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you what AD Link Edge can do, and it's uh, our platform of ever-expanding services, capable of reading data from various sources and pushing it to the IoT Edge, as I've just talked about. So what I'm talking about is we will transform and interpret information, pushing it to multiple streams at the same time, displaying live and historic data through dashboards and enterprise cloud services. So it is both a hardware and software solution. So firstly, I'm going to cover what hardware I've brought with me today. So as you can hopefully see my hand on this box here. Uh, this is one of our small but powerful gateways. It contains an Atom processor, some memory and SSD storage, which is both used to store and run our edge software solution. This gateway is attached to this temperature sensor. Yeah, through this expert DAC here, yeah, on a serial port, and that's using the Modbus protocol. Yeah. Now, I also have attached, uh, sorry, it's out of the picture, this Raspberry Pi here. And the reason I got that attached on an Ethernet port, and that has an OPUA server, and that's connected serially to my second internet, sorry, ethernet interface, okay. Now, as you can see on the top, for those who don't know what a Raspberry Pi does, this has got a sensor out on top and it generates data. Um, and the data that comes off that is humidity, pressure and temperature, okay. So, that's what the hardware I have with me today. And so let's go and look at some software. Okay, on the screen is the AdLink Edge software UI. Um, it's a configuration UI is optional and it's not required to run any of the services which I'm going to show you. But as you can see here, these are a number of different services I have installed on my gateway. Okay, so it's installed locally on the box that I've just shown you. Now, the data generated from the multiple sources on this box can then be pushed to some enterprise cloud services as well. So First off, uh, let's actually have a look at some dashboards. So, as you can see here, I've got a node red dashboard and that's attached to my uh, temperature sensor and it's built into our solution so we can you know, showcase and transform data and generate the dashboard with its built-in capabilities. So, what I'm going to show you now is you can see there's a temperature sensor here and hopefully you can actually see in my hand as soon as I touch this I'm affecting live change on my temperature dashboard there actually if I put it against my cup of tea you'll see that it shoots up probably even more yeah there we go okay so what am I showing you there right so I'm showing you that 
we can stream data live, right? And that's a good start, but we can read that same source of information and send it simultaneously to a database to publish things in near live time. And to do that, I've got another dashboard called Fana. Uh, I'm going to make this larger so you can see that. It doesn't scale very well. Great. Okay. So, Grafana, just another dashboard solution, differing slightly to Node Red in this instance as it connects to a time series database, which happens to be called InfluxDB. Now, that database. Um, is going to be displaying uh, near live and historical data because I'm refreshing it every five minutes, every five seconds rather. So if I put the finger on the temp center again or put it against my uh, T, you'll soon see that in live time and short delay that the temperature settings will uh, make or change. When it updates. See a spike on the graph, but it's not coming up yet. I also have, while it's doing that, a uh, humidity sensor down the bottom here, which is my Raspberry Pi. So if I breathe on that, what you're going to see is the humidity will slowly start to rise. He says, waiting for his dashboard to. There we go. Okay. So what I've shown you there is that we can stream data from multiple sources. So I've got Modbus and I've got OPC UA for my Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And I'm streaming that data it through uh, InfluxDB to display on a Grafana dashboard. And on Node Reg, you saw that I was actually touching a temperature sensor, so I could actually stream that data as well. Okay. So that's multiple sources internally using our data river technology. But what if we wanted to consume that data externally on an enterprise uh, cloud service? Well, we have a solution for that as well. That's my screen refreshes. So what you're seeing there is IBM Watson, and if I put my finger on the temperature sensor at the same time, it will, as you can see, it's shooting up there, okay? And just so you can see that, let me just, show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm affecting live change there. So that's streaming live to IBM Watson's cloud. Okay. So we're streaming northbound to an enterprise service and once again, we can see the same data for humidity and pressure as well. Okay. Now, we can stream to any of the large cloud providers AWS, IBM, Google, and Microsoft Azure. And so exactly the same thing here, but uh, unfortunately AWS out of the box doesn't have the same or graphing capabilities as IBM Watson. So you can see here, I've got a sensor value, which is exactly the same. Touch on here and you'll see it shoots up straight away. Okay. And you'll notice that all of them uh, are pretty much in sync with the uh, the IBM Watson doing the same thing with AWS and the value on my Node Red dashboard. Now, you're seeing the raw value pushed to IBM Watson and AWS, which is why it's just effectively needs to be divided by 10, whereas this is the proper temperature in degrees centigrade. Okay, so just to recap on what we've seen so far is that I've streamed data locally to dashboards and uh, a database using InfluxDB. And by doing that, we also can stream capability, uh, we can also stream to external and enterprise type services as in IBM Watson, uh, MQTT, or any type of service with a standard API, okay? So that's great. But what happens if we cannot mount a dashboard somewhere or we'd actually struggle to uh, in a hazardous environment because a lot of factories that we go to you know you have to actually suit up and do that sort of thing well we actually do have a solution for that as well move my coffee cup out of the way as you can 
see in the back of my gateway here, we've got some aerials and that's, we have Wi-Fi. And what I've done is I've connected to that Wi-Fi point so you can actually see that I'm connecting to the dashboard. Yeah, so that's our software UI as you've seen before. Okay. Now, if I click on the no red dashboard here, Go and catch up. You can see that same temperature sensor there. Now, if I actually touch the temperature sensor, you can actually see a live response. And just to show you, it's in sync. So I'm affecting change there and streaming securely Wi Fi from my gateway to a handheld device. Okay. Now, everything I've shown you so far is pushing data in northbound, um, if you like. But we also like to be able to control and ingest data. And I've got an example for that. So I've got this test slider here. So if you see this test slider here, if I actually just click on it, you can see that it's changing on my main screen on my computer as well, okay? So that very simple example, but what I'm showing you there and why I'm showing you is that means we can affect control at the edge. As I mentioned before. Okay, so let me just go back to my slides to, to recap. There's kind of quite a little, quite a bit there, and then I'll tell you about the user case. So I have some variable sort of input um, to from a temperature, which a finger and uh, like a T. That's connected to a temperature sensor. Um, through a expert DAC, and then it runs our Modbus app service. We also have a Raspberry Pi, which is attached, the, which you've seen as well, running OPC UA, and that's for attaching to our OPC UA service on our gate on the gateway. I've displayed that on a Node-RED dashboard to show that you can visualise the data. I'm also storing the data through InfluxDB before displaying it on a Grafana dashboard. Um, I've shown that we can actually connect to that over Wi-Fi as well, um, so any handheld device, and we can stream it to any enterprise service uh, that we see fit, be that database or um, just a dashboard in the cloud. So what does that actually look like in motion? So that temperature is being pushed through Modbus, and then we're actually publishing it onto our data river. And because it's a published subscribe model, what that means is that as soon as it's published on the data river, any service can subscribe to it. And as you can see, that may, would make it highly efficient because we're reading once and a number of services can subscribe. Doing exactly the same for pressure and humidity, for pushing that through my OPC UA protocol and publishing that onto the data river. And then I've also shown you that I push that to uh, IBM Watson and through InfluxDB to show on the Grafana dashboard. And then finally, what I've shown you is that we can connect to that our Edge UI service over Wi-Fi, so we can actually control using mobile devices at the Edge as well. Okay. So. Let's go to the user case. So one of our customers had a challenge. Now, thermotrons are big uh, chambers which are used uh, in the defense industry to test uh, equipment to, you know, for extreme environments for dust and, you know, ingress and, and you know, that sort of thing. So these chambers, uh, break down quite regularly, unfortunately, uh, but they don't know why, and that's why we're asked to uh, come and have a look and see if we could actually help with that. Now, the sensors, the, the chamber itself has a number of internal sensors. So what we actually done is we attached to uh, that PLC controller, and we put some external sensors, which is onto the water pipe, which feeds into the chamber, so we could measure pressure and temperature. Uh, no different from what you've seen from my demo here, apart from it's a, 
a temperature sensor in a pipe. And what we enabled them to do then is that we could stream that data. Um, so when the machine broke, if the, somebody didn't catch it on the screen, um, then the database, you could actually look at that in a time series way. Um, very importantly, we could sync all the different um, issues that we, sorry, all the different sensors and the different readings that we're seeing to work out uh, why the machine is breaking. Okay. Now, using Grafana, we could easily export that data and use it for management reporting and for a host of other things. But in the first instance, um, just a service call out alone, because this device was unconnected, um, was costing time and money. Because the, by the time that uh, they place the call, the engineer then has to uh, you know, call it come out within 24 hours. Engineer logs onto the machine and says, yep, this is what the issue is. Um, this is the part you need. Drives away and uh, you order the part, waits a couple of days, and then he has to come back and fix it. All in all, um, we're talking usually about a minimum of you know, downtime for seven days. And these machines are required to run 24-7. They have testing equipment. So that's costing the customer a lot of time a lot of effort, a lot of money. Now, they do have other chambers, but all that means is that the other chambers have to run hotter as well. And so therefore you, you create also a maintenance issue. So by putting one of our devices and connecting it to the machine, um, not only could we actually read out the error codes, so that means the engineer wasn't required to actually come out and look at the machine and say, this is the error code, this is the part you need. They can do that themselves, but we are capturing the right information to so they can actually work out why the machine was breaking. And then they could also put in a maintenance window using the historic data stored in the Influx database. Okay, So a number of different advantages and user cases automatically come out of the very fact that we would be able to connect to this machine stream data to visualize it, store it in a database, and um, be able to export all of that data so it could be used for analysis and, in the first instance, predictive maintenance. Okay. So, all very good, all very important. So, that's the issue in a nutshell, where does Influx fit into it and how do we actually use it in our environment? Okay. So what I am, what you're seeing on this screen here is um, I'm logged on to the gateway. Um, our technology runs using uh, Docker containers and what we do is we configure services so we can connect and put stuff from our data river into the database. Now, before I show you that, let me just go back to show you what the configuration looks like, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So we have an Influx DB service, and what this service does is it takes data from our data river, normalizes it, and pushes it into the database. Now, the database doesn't have to sit on this particular node. Um, you could actually put it anywhere, but it makes sense to uh, uh, keep it as close to the machine and as local as possible, um, especially when you're streaming a lot of data. Okay, And as you can see, what you're seeing here is I'm just configuring it based on the host, the port number, the name of the database, and the topic of data, the type of data which I'm streaming. Okay, So let's go back. So all I've done here is I've logged in to my uh, InfluxDB Docker container, so I can actually show you what sort of information we're capturing from the devices that I'm attached to my uh, uh, device. Okay. So, as you can see already, I've shown you um, show series that we have, as you've seen before, humidity um, coming from the Raspberry Pi. We have uh, pressure as well, and then we have temperature coming from Modbus via the uh, temperature sensor as well. 
So all of that is stored you know, within the database. Okay. Um, what sort of issues did we actually see uh, for Ryan doing that? Um, not many at all, which is why we actually integrated uh, Influx into our solution, because um, it's very important to actually have a number of different sensors of all different types um, streaming data to the same point in time where you can quickly do a query and work out what's going on or graph that as you've seen in Grafana as well. Okay. So we saw a lot of value in doing this for um, you know, a lot of our customers and it's something that we're going to continue to do going forward. Um, and I've been testing some of the new uh, parts of InfluxDB's versions 2.0 alpha which means that we'll be able to use the graphing facilities and have that same um, nanosecond response time that you're seeing on the uh, node red dashboard. So you could actually just do it all with Influx should you want to. But at the same time, yeah, you can actually plug in and stream that data to any endpoint that you deem necessary. Okay. So. That's pretty much it. Let me just show you some measurements. Um, uh, Fields keys. And so all I'm doing now is just showing you the data. Okay. Any questions at this point? I'm going to just pause there. Let me just have a look. So I I'm on my go ahead and keep moving along. We'll uh, we'll do Q and A at about quarter till. So, but right now we're uh, we're 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 hyper focused on your presentation here. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So, how do we configure and stream stuff using our data of technology? Let me just close this uh, so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Quite simply, it's all about configuration, right? There's no programming involved or required because uh, we have this uh, app store. So, for example, um, how do I actually stream it from the uh, Modbus service for the temperature? Well, all that is, what I'm doing is I am configuring and connecting to um, dev TTY1, which is uh, COM port 2, yeah, board rate, and a number of uh, different things that I'm connecting to. What I actually want to call it identifier, as you've seen within the database and the, the entity, and how often I actually want to read, right, scan for a reading. So we can actually tune based on the requirements of each particular service. So if it's a digital interface requirement, um, then you might actually want to have a poll rate where you're scanning, um, you know, uh, for a, a say, uh, this is what's like 10,000 times a second. That's quite aggressive for a serial interface, but maybe not so for something uh, of a digital nature, but it's highly tunable that way. Excuse me. And we're doing the same for OPC UA. And as you can see here, um, I have a number of different types um, and I've just given it an instant ID and a value and then have a sampling interval for each one of the services, each one of the, the uh, date, data bits I want to capture and display and publish onto the data river. Okay. And you'll see that each one of these values match what I'm actually as you're seeing within my database here. Okay, so uh, I've been told that I should be as honest and truthful as possible. So what sort of issues have we seen with uh, Influx? Well, let me go back to Kifana. Now, as you saw within my, demo, uh, within my presentation, uh, it, it can be, uh, and this is a Grafana issue more than anything else, it can be a bit laggy. Um, because you know we're reading a lot of data and this is an everybody problem uh, when you actually have I'm a, this is only a small example and there are a number of data points uh, there's only four data points which we're reading here 
uh, let's assume that you know we had you know a thousand of those uh, it's it's going to get messy quite quickly so sometimes dashboarding uh, everything um, doesn't work and also you need to do it for a smaller period of time to make sure that you're not constantly refreshing and also that uh, you're not going to get um, lots of CPU cycles uh, taking up its time just working out um, that you want to take your time series back a couple of days or something like that. So a number of different ways you can actually get around that but um, so in, in my instance I'm only showing it for the last couple of minutes but if I showed it say for the last couple of days um, you, know, you would soon see that uh, if I ran a top on my uh, Linux box that it would actually uh, take quite a bit of time to display this data. So that's partly an issue and architectural um, consideration, I would say, that would have to be made. Now, the, also the other thing is, is that uh, streaming into a database from multiple points, um, that isn't an issue itself. Influx can handle all of that. But to make it highly available, um, it needs to be really an enterprise edition, and you need to be doing it to somewhere where you can actually uh, store and is highly available. Um, so yes, I'm demoing it just on one box, so I, I, it is a singular instance. But there are enterprise versions available, which would make sense if you actually wanted to make sure you have a highly available database as well. Uh, Going forward, um, like I said, I'm, I'm actually playing with InfluxDB2 um, Alpha, um, and so far, so good. Um, I just need to play around with it a little bit more before I'm going to incorporate it into my demo because it isn't actually you know, fully released yet. Finally, i to take you back to our services here. You can see I've got a number of different services configured in different ways. So how do we configure an endpoint for AWS or any other the cloud subscriptions? Well, it's all based on what that particular provider provides to you to allow you to subscribe to that particular service. Um, in AWS's example, uh, we have an endpoint. You need a root certificate, you need a client certificate and a key to make sure that uh, you know, our data is secure before we can then pass up any topic we need, we want, your IoT data, and then I'm pushing the temperature, as you can see, um, from my Modbus protocol. Okay, um, I'm going to shut that down, and I'm ahead of time. Uh, any questions yet? Yeah, it looks like we've gotten a couple questions in so far. But if you do have a question for Chris, please uh, go ahead and use your GoToWebinar control panel and we'll get to as many questions as we can. So um, let's see. So the first one here is, uh, how does InfluxDB scale? How does it scale? Well, in, that's a very, uh, how can you put it? Loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> um, <how does> it, <laughs> is the best way I can put it. Um, how does it scale? Right. Well, just like any database, um, uh, you do need a n amount of storage uh, for it. How have we found it to scale? Uh, we haven't found an issue, and we've had had it running on the background for our customer site now for. Uh, I'm trying to think now. It must be about seven months and um, we've been slowly adding more sensors and more devices and more chambers to it um, and it's still, um, uh, I can't remember the last size of it, but we're still talking into the megabytes rather than gigabytes in terms of size. So in terms of from a, a growth viewpoint, it's highly efficient because we're, you know, we're just storing it's just what we want and the way that it actually is storing that data um, is very efficient as well. So uh, in terms of scale, we're not seeing it an issue with it. Um, what it scales to, I'm sure um, 
Influx could actually give you the full details because mm -hmm. we've not had an issue around scaling it at this point in time. Okay. All right. Great. Next question. Uh, how do you deal with latency issues for the mission critical data? Um, well, latency, massive issue, and we get around that using our, our own technology, um, our data river, um, and because it is a published subscribe model, that means that uh, whatever sensor or whatever we're reading um, and whatever we're pushing onto our data river, it's available for any endpoint, as I showed in the diagram beforehand. So let me just pull this back up so people know what, exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that uh, because it's a published subscribe model, um, uh, latency isn't an issue providing we actually have a decent internet, uh, sorry, or ethernet connection. Um, now, it might become an issue if you actually have to push it over 3G and 4G, um, you know, or over a extended network, but that's the the beauty of some of the technology that we use in-house here is that we only push the data to any endpoint that requests it. Um, so think of it as an open door or you know a, a closed door. So you can actually open as many gates as you like and let things flow or just or rather tap if you like or turn it off or turn it on. So we don't actually suffer with any latency issues because each particular service is tunable um, in terms of how many times it's scanning, looking for data. So as a, I showed you in my example before, um, we can scan for something of a million times a second, but the only value we're interested in is the one when it's being requested, when a service is being subscribed, subscribes to it rather. So in terms of latency, we haven't seen an issue at all because we're pushing it through our data river um, and that pushes it into the database. All right, great. Uh, okay, uh, plenty of time for questions, guys. So if you have a question, please go ahead and uh, just drop it in your, into your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, next question, um, uh, can you please uh, just clarify real quick how InfluxDB is, is used with the ADLink? Um, I guess the, the dots were not officially connected. Okay, right, how we use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we've done is, uh, there are, for most of our user cases, well, when I say most, I'd say all in the, really. Everybody requires data to do something, um, whether it's to help you with a predictive maintenance issue or whether it's for reporting. Um, one thing we find is that you have to store that data somewhere, yeah? So our technology is, you know, we connect anything and push that data to somewhere and it makes sense to uh, that you push it to a time series database the reason you push a time series database is to make sure that uh, all of your sensors and your plc and your, your devices uh, that are connected um, uh, have the same time stamp so that's where influx uh, comes into the picture for us it doesn't make sense just to push it to a standard database because then you'd have to do some work to pull that data out. So by it being in a time series way, we can actually look at periods of time, uh, be that in near live time or historic time, to work out um, what is going on on a particular device. Yeah. So that's where Influx is very important to us. And what we've done is we've actually written a service uh, for Influx that allows it to flow data from any type of protocol into InfluxDB. Excellent, okay. Uh, next question, uh, does the time series engine work with NB IoT connection? Yes. Um, my question would be, <laughs> why, why wouldn't it? Yes, it would, yes it does. <laughs> All right, great. Um, as I said before, plenty of time for questions. So uh, we'll just uh, wait for a minute or two to see if we get any more questions in. And while we're waiting, I do want to remind the audience that today's event is being recorded. 
So if you miss any or all of the event, or if you just want to watch it again, uh, you will have the opportunity to do so. We are going to be sending out a link to the webinar uh, on demand in an email later today. And the webinar also is going to be living on the DevOps.com website. So you can always go, just go there and take a look for it. It's uh, just go to DevOps.com slash webinars, and it should be right there in the on-demand section. Um, okay, it doesn't look like we've gotten any more questions in, so I do want to go ahead and uh, give uh, folks about 20 minutes back of their time. So, um, Chris, thank you very much for the presentation. Lots of good stuff there. I, I, I love seeing the live demo. That's That was awesome. So, thanks so much for your time. Always very dangerous, but yeah, we, we like to do things. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right. All right. Well, I also want to thank the audience for joining me today. Uh, this is Charlene O'Hanlon, and I'm signing off. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Thanks very much.